Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. For some of you, me, it's like afternoon. But um, th today we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to enforce um, application uh, service level agreements with Congress and Manasca. I'm um, Ken Owens. I'm the CTO at Cisco's Cloud Services team. I have Fabio with me. He's uh, my chief architect. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the vision and then um, turn it over to Fabio to go a little bit deeper into sort of the, the how we implement this or how we plan to implement this and talk about some of the current state of what we have and the next steps. And so from a vision standpoint, it's a pretty simple vision. Um, developers don't want to think about infrastructure. They just want infrastructure to work, as you guys all know. And so there's sort of two pieces to that. The first piece is how do you make it easy for a developer to tell you what their intention is? Like what they what they would like to see the performance or what what kind of um, constraints that the application developer knows he has to live within for his application to be successful in the business and in the in the deployments he wants to deploy or that the business may want to deploy him into, and then you have the enforcement of that intent, and between those two you have the third area which is how do you sort of interpret the intent and make some sort of a specification out of that that can be then adhered to when you deploy that application. And so the, the vision that we've been looking at so far has been kind of looking at, you know, a very simple kind of spider diagram where you have like maximums and minimums. And you can kind of allow the developer to sort of work within those constraints. And in general, the idea is that an administrator or the, um, the business owner either based on, you see at the bottom of the picture, there's like this, um, you know, estimated price per month. And so the, the idea is that the business could set up the minimums and maximums. So a developer can't make it less secure than the business has said it can be less secure than, right? And the developer can't make it more expensive than the business is willing to pay for the application without getting additional approvals, for instance. And so if you kind of think about those different dots, you have like a high a medium and a low, and so it's trying to keep the intent like as simple as possible. We're not asking a developer to tell us exactly how much CPU it needs, because as you guys know, it really depends on how much usage the application is getting in production. It, it might need a lot of CPU because there's a lot of people hitting it. It might not need any CPU because it's, it's just being hit every once in a while. And so instead of asking for a specific value, we just say, is your application going to be CPU intensive? If yes, then say hi, and we'll make sure that we give it the most capabilities around that intensity as possible. If you need more elasticity or less elasticity, right, you can kind of move that, you know, the high and the low around within the constraints that the business has defined. So this is sort of an example of what it would, would look like if you'd kind of gone in and said, here's in general how I would like to have my CPU at this level, my RAM, my network bandwidth. Um, you could come and sort of play around with that. My throughput, my elasticity. And then what's needed is how do we monitor that, right? And so it's one thing to basically say on a nice picture, I want this sort of a, you know, set of like high and low parameters. But the big question is how do we then look at that and monitor that holistically and not just, you know, in general from the application standpoint, but going all the way into the infrastructure as well. Because all of these applications are running on physical infrastructure and as containers and other things come into play, you now sort of have to look holistically across that entire stack from the physical layer through the, you know, whatever sort of cloud software you may have, a virtualization layer you may have, whatever sort of containers, the orchestration of those containers, the, the you know, availability of the services that those containers are using, all of these different pieces that are pretty complex have to kind of get monitored based on what the developer says they care about. And so, you know, the last slide, you know, before we get into some of the this implementation details is sort of looking at, you know, kind of thinking about this in terms of, you know, alarms. So if you kind of have a, you know, a, a threshold at the low end that you would say at this point, trigger an alarm. And then the, the action from that alarm would then be taken once you trigger an action. So you can kind of give somebody a hint up front, hey, you've just hit your, you know, network latency is already is close to the boundary of what you said you could handle. And then once you cross that boundary, then we would move those containers and move those servers to another location where the latency wouldn't be as high and try to rebalance that for you. But you kind of give them an idea of that's coming. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Fabio. So let's look at uh, the different 
capabilities that we can implement using a combination of Monasca and Congress. So the first aspect is Ops NOC SLA. So uh, I have this example I took from uh, the documentation of uh, Congress. So this is an example where uh, a policy, which is fairly complicated to read, but in reality what it's doing is looking at utilization of a server or a VM and saying if that utilization for the last X, in this case it was two months, is less than a certain amount, then it means you are not re really using this stuff. And so I'm going to send you an email because you're going to be in the wall of shame, right? You requested all these resources and you haven't really used it, right? And you see that in this case, they are leveraging Xilometer statistics. Uh, they could leverage Monasca statistics too, but that's not the point. The point is that we want to change the model in which this data is moved around. And so the way it works today, uh, you basically have in the system a list of VMs. Those would be the VMs that you have. And uh, what is going to happen is that Congress, through the Xilometer data source connector, will go and talk to Xilometer API at a certain given interval. So we'll pull it and it will say, hey, can you tell me the CPU utilization statistics for these VMs? As a result, Xilometer will return the value. And then uh, this will populate an in-memory um, table in, uh, um, in Congress. And now you see that there is one, the instance number three, that actually does have that low value. And at that point, what Congress does is going and talking to uh, Nova and, Cast and Keystone to retrieve the rest of the information. Reality is, in this type of case, this polling happens in parallel. So it will keep asking to Nova and Keystone for this data, because when it evaluates the policy, the data source will evaluate it continuously at any given interval. And as you can see, there is a lot of data that needs to be uh, taken, right? If you think that there are like 10,000 VMs or something like that, the volume of data that you move around is significant. And then what happened is that, you know, he found that my VM, uh, can VMs are actually fairly full, but mine is not. And, um, and so it's going to find me and it's going to say, hey, you know, you haven't used that VM a lot. And uh, the policy engine will use that and it will say, oh, you are now, you know, infringing uh, the policy. So you're out of compliance. So what we want to really do is we want to move from this model, which works fine, but we think has some challenges in scalability in large environments, especially when you want to also leverage it for containers, because usually containers are a factor of 10 or 100 compared to the VMs that you run. We want to move from this um, approach using alarms. So you see that I have the exact same policy than before. The only thing I changed is that now I have a new type of uh, data uh, source, which is called Monasca Alarms. And that data source um, wants to uh, do the same thing, wants to find the statistics of my CPU usage. But that can be transformed into a Monasca Alarm. So that Monasca Alarm has an expression which goes and looks for the average CPU usage for a given VM, and then if that is less than five, it's going to go and fire an alarm. So how this works? First, we need to define an um, integration point, a notification integration point with Monasca. Monasca already supports Nagios and email and webhooks, so we probably need to go and create a dedicated webhooks for Congress. In that way, we can pass the information or the majority of the information about the alarm back to Congress because bear in mind that alarms can be a portion of the policy evaluation. So Congress may have to do all sorts of other stuff, check all sorts of other things in other systems that are not Monasca, Nova, Neutron, you name it. And so this alarm could be just a signal that there could be a potential infringement, then um, Congress will do the analysis of all the other components and, de and determine if it really is a situation to be worried about or not. So then uh, um, the Monasca data source can create an no alarm notification. And what Monasca will do, will store it into a setting database that, that is usually implemented by MySQL. And um, in parallel to that, uh, the Monasca agents that you have deployed will collect the, the real data, the streaming of monitoring data. And the beauty of this is that uh, when a monitoring agent eats the Monasca API, it basically what Monasca API does is stores into the Kafka bus. And at that point, you have several components that act in parallel. And that's a very 
unique feature that Monasca has because it basically evaluates uh, alarms in stream rather than as a post uh, fact, right? It doesn't pull it from the database. And so you see that when the um, data arrives into the cluster, there are two components, the threshold engines and, uh, and the persister. For the persister does, takes the data and batches it up and store it into the database for other usage, where the threshold engine evaluate those alarms that have been posted and see if any of the metrics that are coming are actually changing the state in those alarms. If that happen, basically the threshold engine fire the alarm, but firing the alarm is again simply storing a notification of the alarm or an alarm indication in another queue, in another topic in the same queue. And so there is another component, which is the notification agent, which can be configured, as I said before, with a webhook, which will take that um, message, that error, um, alarm, and it can use the webhook interface to basically push it to uh, Congress. Congress already supports a methodology of having a RPC, and we are looking at, uh, they are adding a new method, which is called push notifications, which is way more aligned. So when that will be available, we probably switch to that. But even at the current state with the, with the RPC, I can call the Monask Alarm data source, and then Monask Alarm data source will basically, uh, when it eat the Congress API, will do an RPC call to my um, Monasca data source, which will populate the table with the value. Now you see that it will only populate tables with the values that are relevant. It doesn't know, it will not even create a table, or it will not even add a row to that table if any alarm will be fired, right? So the other interesting aspect at this stage is that if we can somehow make alarms conditional to the evaluation of the entire policy, let's say my alarm is the entry point, so I will wait for the alarm to happen. If the alarm does happen, then I can start to think and look at all the other stuff I need to gather to understand if the policy is good or bad. And so at that point, this could be the entry point to say, oh, I got the alarm, so let me check the Nov API, uh, you know, would this uh, uh, VM uh, belongs to, and so then I can find the owner, and then through Keystone I can also find who is the what well, is the email, and then send the email. So potentially, and uh, I, I will need to work with the Congress guys in this uh, space to um, create a conditional aspect where the other parts of the policy are evaluated only when you receive an alarm. That will it, it will be significantly, dramatically decrease the amount of data that you will have to gather at any given time. And then no, from there is the same thing, right? I got the, the table that says the policy is infringed. Now, as Ken mentioned before, what we're really looking at, so we, this was an example for operators, right? But we also look at how we can empower developers to simply define an SLA uh, that says, you know, I have some needs and I want the infrastructure to um, um, respect my needs without having to go into the guts of the entire infrastructure. So let's do something simple like this. Uh, you know, my application is a very important application, maybe, and uh, or is a, you know, production application where my business rely on. So what I really want to do is I want to do something simple like, hey, alarm me if the host has some issues. I don't have any go to tell you what the issues are. You know, you ops define those or could, this could be defined or expanded later on. Uh, and those could be simple things like, you know, is an alpha mean I cannot ping it, I cannot SSH into it anymore, into my host. Um, I start to lose packets, the connection is shaky, so, you know, probably it's not a very good situation. Or the disk space is getting small, potentially the, the disk will be hosed, and then my application will suffer out of it. So as a result of this, what probably I want to do from an application standpoint, I want to migrate, live migrate these VMs elsewhere. Similar with containers. If this was a container environment, what you will do, you will probably go and reschedule the container elsewhere. So you will take them out from the VM or host and then move them elsewhere. So the very interesting thing here is that now we have a bunch of metrics in Monasca that we can leverage to implement this. And uh, all of this that you see here are already available. And so my fairly simple concept of host issues can be translated in a set of alarms, like uh, the status alarm. And so in that case, if you ping or SSH, 
A metric with one will be generated if that fail. Uh, and then the other ones are fairly obvious, right? Percentage of user, of disk used, and how many of packet drops per second. So I can create um, four alarms, and there are four, al four independent alarms. They can be independent if I want to, or those could be all together sub-alarms of a bigger alarm. And so once one of these um, fire, I will uh, receive the alarm. So just, to, just for, for the sake of it, what I did, I mapped those. So you see that even the alarms are not uh, that complicated to, to be written. So the idea is that in the future we want to have a concept in Congress that will allow us to take policies, give hints of the metrics or of the list of the metrics and the values that want to be used, and then Congress can simply go and instruct uh, Congress to, um, so excuse me, uh, Monasca to generate those alarm on Congress' behalf. <coughs> Same thing with the network, network related, right? The packet drops and all of that. So where we are with, uh, with our work right now, so this is the overall architecture that I described before. Um, so Monasca uh, is available, it supports uh, the alarms. We have identified a fairly simple way to integrate between the two through using the webbox and the RPC. And so really, we are going to develop a Monasca alarm data store, which will be specialized in receiving alarms and handling alarms for policies. And then the policy engine will work as is today, because basically what it will do, it will wait for tables to be filled with values, and it will be the responsibility of the Monask alarm data source to fill those uh, tables with the values when the alarm is being uh, received. So what the current status? As I said, we've done, we developed a, a simple data source to validate that we can indeed talk with Monasca, and that uh, has been done. Um, but this is, this is the old camp of polling. We use statistics, which is, you know, gives a certain performance boost. Uh, and then, you know, that was an exercise for us to really find out what the integration points, how the data source is written, how it works, and all of that. It was a more of a learning for experience. And uh, so we found a solution that we believe works. And so what we need to do is um, we need to uh, create the uh, Monasca alarm data source, which instead of polling is going to wait and process alarms. And then uh, um, we probably need to extend a notification in, in Monasca because the current notifications are fairly skinny. They don't send too much data back uh, to the requester. I think we need more data so then uh, really Congress has enough information to make an intelligent decision about, okay, I received this alarm, but what is the impact? What are the other components that uh, are important or make sense? And then uh, uh, lastly, I think this is more of a research, more of a, an interesting uh, um, development is how do we enhance the policy using the policy language. I think the policy language is very expressive. So how do we make that policy language behave with two aspects? One is the ability of giving hints of what the metrics and the threshold should be. And on the other end, uh, I think is the interesting part is, can we make this conditional to alarm? So parts of the policy will be only evaluated whenever there is an alarm as an entry point. So that will reduce the amount of data that Congress will have to store at any given time. And that's it. So I think we have plenty of time for questions, actually. Please yes. use the, um, yeah, the microphone the mic, for please. questions. Hi, Declan. <laughs> no, he's not on. <laughs> The host is not being used for some. Whoa. Okay. Okay. If the host is not being used for some amount of time, then we want to uh, analyze that and send out a notification. How are you going to get alarms? Like, let's say the your policy is your host cannot go below 50% CP usage for six months. Uh -huh. How are you going to handle that with a Monasco alarm? 
Right. So um, basically, it would be um, Congress to store the long time period, right? Because Monasco will allow me every time is under that, right? And it will not go in back to the um, so the, the, the way the, the alarm works is that when there is the, you go below the, the level, then it will alarm. And until you go up, it won't alarm again that the alarm is off, right? So it's the Congress responsibility to keep a timestamp of when the last alarm happened to say, yes, this passed more than two months. And I didn't receive another alarm that says, OK, now you're using more than 50%. OK, so what data store are you going to use to keep track of all those alarms for that long a period? Data, what kind of database are you going to use? So it's, an, it's a, a database that um, Congress has, and uh, currently is in memory, which could be a challenge, because if you lose the instance, or if you lose the service for the two months, you're back to square one. But I guess it will be possible to store that. There's not a very big amount of data, right? It's just an en the entry point with a timestamp. So after a certain amount of time, periodically, you go and fetch that data, and you check mm -hmm. if that policy is still valid or not. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so are you going to rely on periodic alarms coming in? Like every day you get an alarm that says below 50%, below 50%, below 50%? Right, so we, we talked about uh, in, in the session that Monask is going to add some sort of periodic or repeated alarm. And when that is enabled, actually will make this kind of example way easier. Because at that point, I don't even even to remember, right? If I have the, in the periodic alarm, I have the first alarm, and then I have the timestamp of the period, I can just go and say, when I receive an alarm after two months, I can uh, immediately identify, oh, well, this is periodically alarming from more than two months, so that I'm in policy violation. Right? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Two questions on the <coughs> long-term storage for some of this. Is there any idea on how you'd end up purging the data? Uh, so I understand the you could in, like in which side, sorry, in the Monasca or in the Congress side? In Congress. Um, yeah, so currently uh, I don't think Congress has a, uh, a way of purging the data. I mean, is it in memory database and is refreshed uh, uh, any given time? Um, what they do is that they do a delta, though. So if you are in a traditional polling mechanism, right, and I poll, let's say I poll Kiston for the list of users, what the um, data source is going to do, it builds a list the first the time, and then when it polls again, it only add uh, the difference from the last time. But it will need to keep, if, if I need to have the list of all the users that are uh, available to email them, I, there is nothing today I can do to uh, avoid that, unless team disagree on that. Do Congress question. I'm a Congress newbie. Um, so let's say a violation of policy occurs and there's a migration that needs to happen. Is but that happening within Congress or is that is there something polling Congress? Right. To so so there, are two, there are two ways, actually. Uh, you could have an external agent that polls uh, Congress and he says, I'm interested in this particular policy because maybe you are the policy owner or you have the grants to see that particular policy. And then when the policy is in alarm, uh, then you can do your own action. So let's say you have uh, um, <clears throat> Mistral and you are polling because you create that kind of policy. And then you can say, if the policy is infringed, I have a workflow that I want to run, which will do the migration or whatever the Mistral workflow wants to do. Uh, alternatively, though, in the policy itself, there is an execution model where you can say, uh, run something, and the execution uh, command in the policy itself does allow you to c um, run anything that can be run through a, a CLI for any of the services. So potentially in your policy itself, you could have an execution, Nova, Live Migrate, whatever, and, uh, and, and have Congress to actually call Nova and make the execution on behalf of the tenant. question. Um, is there any concept in the future of adding some sort of, um, so this to me kind of sounds like incident management. Is there any concept of doing something that would give you eventually problem notification or um, a way of escalating this up to a problem management aspect? What do you mean for problem management? Well, kind of like in an ISIL type pattern, it seems like 
this is going to give me instance um, no, or incident notification that there's an event. Um, but if it's an ongoing problem, let's say we have uh, the, so your example about. Oh. Then you have your problem management team yeah. can look at that data periodically and say, okay, we've seen this happen for the last six months every week at, on Wednesday at 2 p.m. What's going on on Wednesday at 2 p.m., right? Right. Yeah, well, so they will be as part of the external consumers of that policy, right? Because you can monitor the policy, and then if the policy has this pattern, then the NOC can say, okay, I'm going to sack or the office people, why I always get the situation, right? So another use case there that's interesting is, um, and kind of goes back to the point you made, that you, you may not want an automatic action to happen, right? You may want to say, here's a recommendation recommendation for an action, send this off to someone who can understand if that should actually happen or not, and then they hit okay, and then that fires off something inside, you know, either you know workflow or some other execution command that someone else can say, yeah, we bless this, go. So I think both use cases are important to keep in mind. Hi. Some, somewhat related to that last question, I think. Um, so we, we have inside uh, Ecom, we, uh, you've probably seen that white paper from at and right, about this thing that we're going to be we're going into open source with. One of the first things we're going to go with is, is our, our, what we're calling our VNF event stream. So you have basically, you know, you have, I think you have Nagios integration today, right, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Monasco? Is that true? Or, or is it just within OpenStack? I think it's just within OpenStack. Just within, okay, so yeah. I think it's Vitraj maybe that has the idea of a, Na a Nagios plugin. So, so, um, Monasco, Monasco supports pager duty, but I don't think Nagios. Okay, so, so if, if you have this, this notion of exhaust coming out of the VM, which includes syslogs, which includes all the stuff you typically get from SNMP, things like that, things that are application specific, right? And you, and you stream that up to a collector, which throws it all into a data lake and does the sort of things you're talking about, intelligence, you know, of, you know time trending and, and whatever, and prediction and all those sorts of things. One of the functions that that thing can do, which is one of the pieces of our data collection analytics engine component of Ecom, is actually integrate with Monasca, for example, to, to, to issue alarms. So that's the first question. If, if I have that more, more workload internal or host internal rather than uh, OpenStack infrastructure internal, right, focused set of, of information, how would I integrate that with Monasca uh, um, to, to invoke these same sort of, of conditions? So there, are, there are two ways of doing it. There is a lightweight and a heavyweight. The heavyweight is that you take the metrics, because Monasca is metric agnostic, right? Really, there is a metric name, there is a value and timestamp and a bunch of dimensions. So that they, Monasca doesn't have to have metrics. They're only open stack. You can consume metrics. This is a general purpose metrics engine, right? So you can put any metrics you want. So one way is that you put the metrics that are relevant for the type of alarms you care of, and you forward it back to Monasca. So similar to that, Monasca, um, if I go back, yeah, another one, yes. So that Monasca agent you're there, you can be a new agent that will push new type of metrics into it. And then uh, there is an alarm that is based on that. The second way of doing it, which is, I think is more lightweight, is better because you don't duplicate the data, is that you, do, you get your own metrics, you do your own analytics, and as a result, you generate a new metric, which is a composite metric or is a distilled metric out of your analytics, right? And that distilled metric will be pushed into Monasca. And then you have an alarm that only acts on the distilled metrics that you have, right? And if it goes above a certain value or if it does exist, like the one that was like, I, cannot, I can or I cannot SSH, zero, one, right? So that becomes more of a flag. If that metric exists with value one, then fire the alarm. Okay, and, and that's the, 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 the creation of that is something that's documented uh, in Monasca's? Uh, yeah, Monasca has the way to where you, well, Monasca's an API and as an agent. So you can just eat the API right. with, uh, with your metric and it will be automatically stored. And because it's treated as anything else, if you have designed an alarm that uses that metric, it will fire. Okay. So Yes, 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 yes. But, 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 but to answer to this gentleman here for, is that the aggregator will use the metrics that you have pushed as part of the external system. So if you don't want to replicate or store those metrics twice, 
In the external system, you do the analysis or the aggregation. You fed into the other one only one metric, which will be then alarmed. Right. So it depends how much data replication you want. Right. So there will be some cases where the XDR might be Yeah, especially if, if the data, uh, the, the way I would do it, if, if the data is then relevant to be seen within the OpenStack environment to correlate the metrics in views, and then I will push it into Monasca because then you augment what Monasca can see from the OpenStack to the underlying infrastructure or the network infrastructure around it or whatever at and is capturing around the OpenStack environment, right? But if it's completely relevant, then I would just send the, the metric that is relevant to the it, it is relevant, for example, scaling, right? Right, auto scaling, et cetera. Yeah, if okay. it's relevant, I would just, you know, push the, to the Monask API. Batch the data, though. Right. So <laughs> and the, other, the other, very quickly, the other approach that, that we've been considering is, of course, we can create a data source driver for Congress, and, and we can create tables, right, uh, uh, policy tables that, that, you know, abstract the, the, the data that we're seeing in, inside our kind of over-the-top sort of analytics and Yeah, engine. but if you're in that camp, you are in the polling camp, right? Well, I mean, we're, we're, but again, if there's a push driver, we can push data into that table. So, so that that you know that push driver was one of the things we we proposed initiated through OPNFV right to, to be implemented in Congress. Right. Uh, the the very last thing, really sorry, very briefly, you mentioned a a a, a policy expression, for intent policy expression to Congress data log, parser, translator, or whatever. Is that did I get that right? That you that you want to to uh, allow developers to express these policies without having to know necessarily the data log language. Yes, that's, that's, that's the vision, to have a very simple UI where, right. you know, because and I... API, so you could push it through the API as well. Yeah, and so it would be very important, I think, to make sure that that policy expression is aligned with what's going to come down in a, like a, a BNF package as part of a Tosca, to, Tosca blueprint, right? right? So that we, we make sure we do it one time, yep, right? Just and once. We, and we minimize <laughs> the number of parsers, et cetera, we have, we can reuse, et cetera. So. Exactly, okay. yeah. Thank you. Hey, Brad. Hi. Thanks for the talk. I learned a lot about Congress that I didn't know before. Um, you mentioned potentially a new webhook, um, like a Congress-specific webhook. Um, what data is lacking right now in what's being pushed from Monasca in an alarm? I can't hear what the very well. What data is lacking? What, what are we lacking? Right right why do we need a webhook in Monasca for the alarm? I, I think I think if I'm correct, Monasca just sent the ID and the, the the state transition change and maybe the value. Um, Probably what we want to do is push some of the dimensions that are uh, in the alarm, right? Uh, they, they are in the metric that generate the alarm. Because for instance, if I already get a host ID or if I get a tenant ID or all this kind of stuff, uh, will be very useful, that data to be then used, fed up, to, do, to send up to, po to the policy engine to the say, oh, the, this is the tenant ID. So you know, I don't need to go to talk to anybody else to find a tenant ID, right, or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so that's changed recently. There, I think most of that is there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but what I'm wondering is if <coughs> we've talked about maybe adding a custom field to that, and if there was a custom field where you could add metadata or something, maybe that you wouldn't need a new notification message. Or uh, at this stage, I don't think we will need that. Uh, it could be if we need to uh, somehow uh, change the type of course of action uh, that we will do based on, if we need to call a different, uh, um, perform a different action based on, on values of the alarm. So that could be, uh, so if you look at, uh, the vision aspect there is the, the you know, soft limit and hard limit, right? So I could have some metadata that tell me what to do if I it was the soft limit that was hit or the hard limit that was hit, right? What different uh, things I need to kick or not. Um, but I, at this first implementation or integration stage, I think we, we, may, we may do without, but it could be an interesting thing. And that could be definitely pushed through. So if the, if the alarm setting as a concept of metadata that I can push, then you just give me that metadata back. Yeah. Uh, that would be fairly easy, yeah, right? That would work for our use case, too. Right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank thanks. you. Hi. Uh, first of all, great presentation. A uh, uh, couple of things. Uh, I was thinking how you're planning to s uh, give out the integration po integrations that you have done to the community, and also, like, what are the plans for the proposals that you have, like are these going to be done as part of open source project? Or yes. yes, so the idea is to uh, do those changes in, uh, so probably 
uh, we may end up having a new notification mechanism, which is a Congress-specific one. And we, I need to see if it's needed, we do it. If it's not needed, it's just a matter of creating the right webhook um, um, URI, then, then it will be even easier. And then uh, I think in, uh, in, uh, in Congress, where the majority of the works will go, because we need to implement that particular uh, data source that deals with the Monasca alarm. And then I think I'm going to work with the community to try to see if we can express the policy in such a way that alarms will be the entry point as uh, validation of the policy. So there are all other aspects I need to validate, but my alarm will be the entry point, and then I can then start to talk to the other services to gather the other information instead of doing this in parallel. I think to me that's the other interesting uh, part that I want to work with the community. And the third is this ability of executing things, which is already there. So how do we tie it all together so I can really demonstrate things like I simulate, I disconnect, uh, I, I reduce the, uh, uh, the, I make a host connection difficult or something like that, and then the, the, the alarm will allow me to go and talk to Nova and live migrate the VM, right? So if I can get with a scenario like that that will work with a combination of Monask and Congress, I think that would be a very interesting uh, solution. Thank you. I think, I think our biggest goal here is a sort of, um, and it seems, this is sort of complex, but we're trying to do something pretty simple and get you know, something we can you know, contribute back to the community to kind of start the conversation. Um, I, I do think that as, as you know, Fiverr kind of alluded to constraints or you know, non-coexistence type of, of policies that get much more complicated. We definitely want to get to that point and, and, and work with the community to kind of figure out the right way to, to provide much more details around policy and how you would want to see a policy executed. But I think we, have the, we were trying to kind of find a, a good starting point. So that's sort of where we're at today. Let's just start with this, see where this goes, get the community involvement, get, get feedback, and then as we want to add better and more um, explicit policies, if you will, then we can kind of work on that together and say, what's the next step after this? Great questions. Any other questions? Thank you all very okay. much for your time today. It was great to Thank be you here. Guys.